All right, let's look at what happened in Season 1 of Shadow and Bone. We begin in Ravka, a nation divided by a dark region known as the Fold. The northern part of the Fold reaches to the forests of Fjerda, and the southern part to the mountains of Shuhan, neither of which are friendly to Ravkins. We meet Alina, a cartographer for the First Army who is part Shu but doesn't know her true heritage. Alina is reunited with her childhood friend Mal, a tracker she met growing up in an orphanage in Karim Zin in East Ravka. Mal is assigned to a unit that will cross the Fold, a dangerous mission because of the darkness and monsters that dwell within. Worried for her friend, Alina burns the maps of West Ravka so the cartographers will have to join them. The crew includes members of the Second Army known as Grishas who can use magic. A special ship has been designed by Grisha known as Fabricators that use magic on composite materials like metal and glass. A squalor or wind summoner propels the ship across land using her power. Meanwhile in Ketterdom, the owner of the Crow Club, Kaz Brecker, hears of a high-paying job. He assembles a band of people with various talents to make a bid for the job, including Inej, a stealthy assassin who is an indentured servant, and Jesper, a skilled sharpshooter. The crows rush to get the job before the local crime lord, Pekka Rollins. Back on the ship, Alina and crew are traveling in the fold, where only low amounts of blue light are allowed as to not attract the flying monsters called Volcra. The blue light goes out, so this idiot decides to light a lantern, and the ship is immediately attacked. In the chaos, a cartographer named Alexi gets scared and jumps off the ship. Mal is attacked by a Volcra, and Alina shoots the beast to try and save him. As she leans over Mal to potentially say goodbye, the Volcra grabs her. In a fit of panic, Alina suddenly bursts into light, unleashing a magical ability she didn't even know she had. Back in Ketterdom, Kaz brings Dreesen the rare heart render he needs, and it is revealed that Dreesen has captured Alexi, who made it through the fold on foot. The heart render uses her magic ability to influence Alexi's emotions and allow him to reveal what happened in the fold, and he claims Alina is the fabled sun summoner who can use light magic to potentially destroy the fold. Dreesen then offers Kaz the job of capturing Alina. In a flashback, we learn that Alina missed the Grisha testing as a child because she was hiding with Mal, explaining how she never found out about her gift. In the present, she is brought before General Kirigan, who tests her and confirms that she is indeed the Sun Summoner. He immediately sends her to the little palace for safety and training. Mal attempts to go after her, but is stopped by his fellow soldiers. The travelers are attacked by Fjord and Druskel, who are Grisha hunters, and many are wounded or killed in the fight. At the last minute, General Kirigan himself uses shadow magic to save Alina and takes her the rest of the way to the palace on horseback. In Ketterdom, Pekka Rollins tracks down Kaz and threatens him. It's revealed that they have a history, but Pekka doesn't remember him. Inej is summoned by her owner, Tante Helene, at the menagerie. Helene offers Inej her freedom if she kills a human trafficker named Arkin, but that would go against her spiritual beliefs. Desperate, Kaz finds out about the Conductor, a man who has figured out a way to cross the fold. Inej goes to the human trafficker's house and is about to kill him when Kaz shows up. Turns out Arkin and the Conductor are the same guy. Kaz promises Inej she will get her freedom and she lets him live. Back at the menagerie, Kaz gives Helene the deed to the Crow Club as collateral against Inej's contract, promising to pay the debt when they return. Alina is cleaned up with the help of Genya, a tailor who uses her magic to alter appearances. She is taken before the King of Ravka, where Kirigan helps her show her ability. The king urges for her to be trained quickly as he fears West Ravka may soon make a bid for independence. Alina is welcomed by some of the Grisha, while Zoya makes rude remarks, clearly jealous of all the attention on Alina. After an altercation with Zoya during training, Alina finds solace in the library where she meets the king's creepy spiritual advisor. The apparat tells her about the history of Grisha, and how some used to kill certain animals and use their bones to amplify their power. In the pictures, Alina recognizes a stag she's been dreaming about. Finally, Alina is taken to Bagra, a trainer who refuses to work with her until she starts believing in herself. Finally leaving Ketterdom, Kaz and the crows gather the supplies Ark and the Conductor requested, including special coal and a live goat. They try to meet his contact Nina, a heartrender who can get them into the palace, but find she's been kidnapped by the Druskel. 
the conductor takes them to a train car he has rigged up to cross the fold, the marks on his arm showing he has crossed many times. Jesper arrives with angry mob in tow, revealing after they take off that he didn't get the full amount of coal requested. During the trip, they are attacked by Volkra. Jesper uses the goat to calm himself enough to use his sharpshooter skills and take out the creatures. They barely manage, but do make it through the fold. Mal's company is offered an opportunity for a special mission, which is tracking down the mythical stag. Mal recognizes Alina's drawing and volunteers once he hears the reward is a trip to the little palace. Not wanting him to go alone, his army buddies Mikhail and Dubrov volunteer to go as well. Back at the palace, Kirigan and Alina grow closer as he asks her to call him Alexander and shares his childhood trauma from being a descendant of the Grisha who created the fold known as the Black Heretic. Alina has been waiting on word from Mal after writing him a letter, but Bagra helps her realize it's her connection to Mal that has been holding her back. She has Genya healed a scar on her palm that is her symbolic link to Mal, and her training really takes off. The crows are now in East Ravka, but have to find a new way to get into the palace to capture Alina. Jesper leaves his goat with a barmaid, giving him a bullet on a string to remember him by. They go full-on heist movie to steal the blueprints of the little palace, hoping to find a secret way in. Everyone is gearing up for a celebration at the palace called the Winter Fate, and a traveling troupe that is scheduled to entertain suddenly finds themselves in need of performers. Inej and Jesper use their talents to get hired by the troupe, finally scoring their way into the palace. Arkin's contact Nina is being held prisoner on a ship by the Druskel, who want her to stand trial before executing her. Turns out she has been working with Kirigan too. He's grown concerned by her lack of contact and sends the heartrender Fedur to find her. Mal manages to track the stag, but their group is attacked by Fjordans. Both his buddies are killed and Mal is seriously wounded, though he manages to take out the last of the enemies. Finding himself alone in the frozen wilderness, he comes face to face with the legendary stag. Mal is back at the first army camp and demands to be sent to the little palace despite his injuries. The day of the winter fate arrives and Genya is helping Alina get ready. Kerrigan has planned a demonstration of the sun summoner and sends a fabricator named David with special gloves to help. Alina shows she doesn't need the help. Before their grand entrance, Alina tells Kerrigan that he's not alone anymore and they share a kiss. The crows and Arkin are allowed into the palace with the traveling troop and they begin to make their plans to kidnap Alina. Jesper is set to find the getaway carriage and manages to find himself a stable boy along the way. After the Sun Summoner demonstration, rather than applause, Alina is met with kneeling, showing people believe her to be a saint and sent to save them from the darkness of the fold. Mal has arrived at the palace and is brought to see Kirigan, who is the one that ordered the stag to be found. Mal refuses to show him the location of the stag until he sees Alina. Kirigan interrogates him for information to prove he actually knows Alina then says he'll arrange a meeting and sends Mal to another room to wait. Meanwhile, Arkin has gained access to Alina's dressing room and attempts to kill her. He doesn't realize they've used a double, and he kills Marie, who is disguised as Alina, instead. Bagra receives word that the stag has been found and orders that the tracker be brought to her. When Mal arrives, he is attacked, though he manages to escape and is now loose on the grounds. Kerrigan uses Mal's information to get Alina's favorite flowers for her, and they slink away to his room and begin to kiss again. They are interrupted by news of Arkin's attack, but Kerrigan doesn't tell Alina the news and instructs her to wait for him. Betrayed by Arkin, who wasn't supposed to kill anyone, the crows attempt to regroup, but they are followed by one of the Inferni twins named Pavel. Kaz subdues him, but Pavel recovers and is about to kill Kaz when Inej knifes him from the balcony. Inej is conflicted, having just killed someone against her beliefs, but also saving Kaz's life. They choose to abandon their plans and flee. Back in Kirigan's room, Bagra appears from a secret passageway and insists that Alina come with her. In the passages, Bagra tells her that Kirigan is not a descendant of the Black Heretic, but is in fact the Black Heretic himself. She proves it by wielding the shadow magic herself and admitting that she is his mother. She explains that Kirigan doesn't want to destroy the fold, but to harness it and use it as a weapon. The Volkra are actually people who were mutated the last time he tried. She tells Alina to stay put and wait for her to come back. But Alina chooses her own path and escapes the palace by hiding in a nearby carriage. 
that happens to be the one Jesper had stolen. Mal is watching from the shadows as the crows drive off with Alina stowed away. Bagra confronts Kirigan, and he threatens her, saying she is no longer needed. Kirigan interrogates Arkin and learns he was trying to kill Alina for Zlatan, a West Ravka general. He uses a heart render as a human lie detector and kills Arkin once satisfied he has all the information he needs. Alina climbs from the trunk and comes face to face with the crows. They offer to take her across the fold, but Alina uses her power to blind Kaz and Jesper, and Nezh believes she is a saint and lets her go. After attempting to buy some dragon fruit, the villagers run her out of town for being Shu. She runs to the woods where she is reunited with Mal. They have a lovely reunion where they discover each was writing letters to each other, but neither received them. Alina learns that Mal found the stag, and she decides they must find it before Kirigan does. Zoya tells Kirigan they can't find Alina and attempts to comfort him, as she seemingly has done in the past. He denies her and says Alina is the only important one now, and they must find her. Kaz confronts Inej for letting Alina go, and Inej learns that Kaz put the crow club on the line for her. They had booby-trapped the carriage, and when it goes off, they attempt to flee. Kirigan stops them, sending a Grisha after each crow while confronting Kaz himself. Jesper subdues Ivan, but opts to knock him out instead of killing him. Inej stabs Polina, the twin of the Inferni she had killed earlier. Inej warns Polina not to remove the dagger or she'll die. However, Polina threatens to seek revenge and kill everyone she loves, so Inej decides to remove the dagger. Kaz tells Kirigan that they didn't kidnap Alina, that she ran away, but Kirigan attacks. Kaz throws a flash bomb and disappears. Once the crows come together again, they know they need to get away fast, and they hijack Kirigan's carriage. The ship carrying Nina has been destroyed, and she uses her magic to save Matthias, a Druskel that had shown some compassion to her previously. She warms him while he swims them to shore, and despite their differences, they have several bonding moments as they try to survive the bitter cold. Now we enter a flashback, and we see Kirigan when he is known as the Darkling, and the Grisha are being persecuted. He has been trying to secretly help Grisha learn to use their abilities, and the Ravkin army is trying to stop them. After they kill his healer, he becomes desperate and finds the journal of the first Grisha coming across a spell of some kind. The army surrounds the school, and Kirigan uses the spell, which creates the fold. The crows regroup, and Inej reveals she won't be going back to Ketterdom with them. Kaz ultimately understands and explains that they are the crows because the birds have excellent memory and always remember those who have wronged them, but also those who were kind. They decide to sneak aboard a skiff that is taking diplomats across the fold. Alina and Mal find the stag, and Alina learns she may not have to kill the beast to amplify her power. But just as she discovers this, Kirigan's crew shoots the beast and Mal. Alina uses her power to shield them both, but ultimately Kirigan convinces her to comply by promising to have Mal healed. He orders David the Fabricator to graft part of the antlers to Alina's collarbone while having a small piece put in his own hand. This allows Kirigan to control Alina's power. They arrive at a First Army camp that is preparing a ship for launch, and Alina is reunited with Jenya. Alina realizes that Jenya has been promoted because she was working for Kirigan all along and had not sent her letters to Mal. Jenya has also poisoned the king, who had been abusing her for years, and the queen has been quarantined, leaving the apparat in charge of the kingdom. Mal is chained up, and Kirigan tells him that he will wait until Alina forgets about him. He says he doesn't have to kill Mal, because time will do that for him, referencing that Kirigan is ageless and Alina would be now too. Mal spots the bullet tied to Jesper's goat friend, and he uses it to free himself and then sneaks aboard the ship. Kirigan chains Alina to the deck of the ship and reveals the antlers in her clavicle to distract people from noticing. We discover this is the very same ship the crows are boarding, and the crew is telling people they will be traveling with the Sun Summoner and witnessing the destruction of the Fold. Once in the Fold, Kirigan uses Alina's power to create a light tunnel, shielding all on board from the Volcra. The crows go below deck to avoid detection. Inej spots Mal listening to them, and they realize that they all want to stop Kirigan and begin to hatch a plan together. Nina and Matthias reach civilization and discuss their options. They want to stay together, but both would be throwing away their entire lives to do so. As Nina introduces him to Waffles, Matthias suddenly keels over, the work of Fedyr, the heartrender who has found them. Knowing Fedyr will kill Matthias, 
Nina desperately shouts that he is a slaver, so the nearby captain will arrest them. A standoff between the captain's crew and the Grisha results in Fedyur backing down. Matthias wakes up imprisoned on a ship and mistakenly believes that this was Nina's plan all along. In West Ravka, General Zlatan has an army waiting to greet Kirigan's ship and orders them to kill everyone, which would effectively start a revolution. Kirigan orders Zoya to stop the ship just short of emerging from the fold. He admits that he plans to use the fold as a weapon and expands it over the waiting army and the nearby city. Alina tries to stop him, but Kirigan overpowers her. He claims he can redraw all the maps and orders the diplomats to report that fact back to their home countries. Not willing to wait for the crows to decide when to act, Mal rushes at Kirigan, shooting him. Ivan takes Mal down using his heartrender skills. The diplomats come forward and say this will never work and will only make everyone hate and fear Grisha more than they already do, so Kirigan orders them all killed. Inej follows Mal and throws a dagger, but a heartrender takes her down as well. Having watched Kirigan expand the fold over where her family lives, Zoya has a change of heart and saves Inej, asking her to help stop Kirigan. Jesper joins the fray as well. Kirigan moves the barrier to put Inej and Zoya in the darkness, where they are attacked by a Volkra. Inej saves Zoya, and Kaz emerges just in time to save Inej. Alina suddenly has a vision of the stag and realizes she has its power. Taking Inej's fallen dagger, she uses it to slice Kirigan's hand and sever their connection. Kirigan is baffled, and Alina explains the stag chose her, so she alone receives its power. Mal takes the opportunity to knock Kirigan over the side of the ship, tumbling down with him. They fight, and Mal is able to tell him, I don't have to kill you, your past will do that for me, just as a Volcra carries Kirigan away. A heart render attacks Alina, but Jesper shoots him. Mal appears at Alina's side and urges her to stay with them. Alina wakes and is able to help Zoya steer the ship to safety outside the new boundaries of the fold. Recovering around a campfire, Alina gives Inej a dagger to replace the one she lost and burns her son summoner Grisha uniform. She also gives Kaz an expensive piece of jewelry in exchange for not revealing her identity to anyone. Zoya leaves to find out what might be left of her family. The rest board a ship that turns out to be the one Nina and Matthias are on. Nina overhears Kaz talking about needing a heart render. The crows decide to stay together long enough to pay off Inej's contract and get the crow club back. Alina and Mao will travel and learn more about her power and plan to come back when she is strong enough to destroy the fold. The final scene shows Kirigan emerging from the fold, still alive, and with new shadow monsters who seem to be able to follow him out of the darkness. And that's where we end season one of Shadow and Bone.